We have a good-sized congregation tonight, and I'm guessing that the size of the assembly will be a little light tomorrow with this pending snowstorm. And it reminds me of the story of a minister who was a pastor of a very small rural country parish. And there was a blizzard that started in the middle of the night, early in the Sunday morning. And he figured that nobody was going to show up for the church service, you know, Sunday morning service. And he thought, well, you never know. So he went over to church and unlocked it. And sure enough, a farmer walked across his pasture and he sat down in time for the service. He was the only one in church. So the pastor thought, I don't know, should I, maybe I should cancel it? But he thought, you know, we're both here. I prepared an homily and he was good enough to come out. And so he began the service. And it went over an hour. And when it was over, the pastor walked down the aisle and waited for the one person congregation to walk out the door. And he says, I was surprised to see you. I'm, I'm quite impressed, and it's, you're a real sturdy, faithful soul, and I, I hope you have a safe trip home. Well, the farmer thanked the pastor for coming out, too. So the pastor said, so what did you think of the service? And the farmer said, well, pastor, to be honest, you know, I have a, a, quite a number of head of cattle. And if only one of them came into the barn at feeding time, I wouldn't drop the whole load on them. <laughs> but now for the homily. <laughs> you know, little, little children, like toddlers, three years old, four years old, they have a hard time getting a sense of time and how long things take. And so they're not always very good at waiting. It's not helpful to say 10 more minutes. And so the child on the trip to go see grandma was like, you know, are we there yet? And he had just asked this 10, 15 minutes early. And the parents might be annoyed, but he might be proud of himself that he waited so long before he asked again. The second reading talks about a farmer planting and waiting for the harvest. But if you take a little toddler to plant a garden, if there isn't any action after supper, I mean, they want to see something. And if there isn't anything growing the next day, in their world, something's wrong. Or you go to a grocery store, and a child knows that this is a food item that they're going to get to eat, and they want it now. It doesn't really help them to be told, wait in 10 minutes. Because for them, they don't really have that good sense of time, like we as adults who are like, oh, in 10 minutes, I can't wait to dig my teeth into this. So as a kid, it can also feel like it takes forever for Christmas to come, especially as we light the candles of the Advent wreath. And when we get a chance to light the rose candle, it's like, oh, yes, you know, we're, we're getting there. Advent is half over. Forever is half over. And the church has this color and says, Gaudiamus, let us rejoice, because we're nearing the celebration of Christmas. But the truth is, we still do have some time to wait, another two weeks. And it's important that while we wait, we wait with confident hope, joyful hope. What is hope? Hope is believing in the promises of God and that he will fulfill them someday. That's the theological definition of hope. God will fulfill his promises, and there should be a sense of confidence in us as we await. The problem is that just as little children are getting 
having struggling with that sense of time and how long 10 minutes is, we as adults, most of our lives struggle with God's timing of things. We think he should act sooner. What is he doing? But to continue to wait and hope. In today's readings, we have John who is waiting in prison and he's waiting for confirmation. Is Jesus the Messiah? Or is he also getting the world prepared for somebody to come? Should we be waiting for someone else? Isaiah, he compares God's sinful people to a desert and that someday, the day is going to come when they're going to be like a blooming garden and their hearts are going to be open to everything that God wants. But ultimately, that isn't really fulfilled until Jesus comes into the world 700 years later. In the second reading, when James is talking about the farmer who patiently waits for the early rains and the late rains before the harvest comes, he is telling Christians, hold on, wait, Jesus is coming in glory, but be patient. It's good he said be patient, because we're still waiting 2,000 years for Jesus to come in glory. It's hard to get accustomed to God's timing. We may be waiting for answers to our questions like John the Baptist. We might be waiting for freedom from our troubles like Isaiah prophesied, freedom for the sinful people of God. We might even be waiting for Christ to come in glory. Or maybe some of us are just anxiously awaiting for December 25th. Whatever we're waiting for, let's remember that we are called to be a people of hope. We are confident that God will fulfill His promises. He will fulfill them in His time.